Hey y'all, this is the Penny Pinching Prepper and welcome to my channel. Um, today we're going to be going over the frameless backpacking cot and um, I'd appreciate if you guys get down there and give me a big thumbs up if you're new to the channel and think I uh, have something to offer, please subscribe and um, comments are always welcome. I do enjoy the comments. Um, I like getting back to the comments. It gives me something to do in my spare time. So get down there, leave some comments, guys. Um, this is a a great product um, project, however you want to look at it. Uh, it's not mine. I didn't think it up. I got to give a huge shout out to uh, Corporal's Corner. This was his idea. Uh, he came up with it a little over a year ago. He said he was going to manufacture it. He never got around to it. Um, never really ever talked about it again, in fact. Um, but for those of you who like to go backpacking, camping, um, or like myself, I'm in it for my inch bag, which is I'm a never coming home bag. I kind of want something that's going to last long term, something a little longer than a, a nylon cot, or a not cot hammock, or, you know, some uh, plastic liner bags for drum liners, you know, that type of thing that's, you know, real short term. I wanted something more long term, and this really fit the, the little niche for that long term thing. <clears throat> uh, if you all stick to the end of the video, I've got some little helpful temps, tips for you guys that uh, can make this go a little faster. Um, but if you don't, well, hey, you miss out, whatever, right? Um, so let's not talk about it too much. Let's get right into it, guys. All right, so I'm not going to be showing you how to make a full-size one. I'm going to give you the steps in what it takes to make one on a smaller little piece of fabric here. As you can see, it's not very big. All right, now... You're going to need a six by nine uh, canvas drop cloth, and um, it's got to be six by nine or six by eight. Anything shorter than that, and you could be cheating yourself in the end. Okay, and reason being is you know, let's say you're six foot tall. All right, you want three to four inches at your head, three to four inches at your feet, so you're not like literally right up to the edge. It makes it a little more comfortable that way. And there's some fold over space you have to take into consideration when you're measuring this out for your height. And I do recommend that you measure it out for your height, okay? So let's pretend that this is the six by nine. I got mine at Harbor Freight. I like to save a little money. And to be honest with you, it's actually some pretty decent material. Um, and we can actually make it stronger by using the beeswax or the waterproofing beeswax compound um, that will eventually be tied in with this one and a couple others in my um, uh, playlist. So if you wanna see them all together or see what you missed, it will be in a playlist. Uh, so look for that um, in my, my, uh, my channel descriptions and all that, you know, where it says playlist, blah, 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 right? So let's go ahead and pretend, all right, that this is a, a six by eight or six by nine, whatever, right? Now you are gonna get some factory seams, okay? You might only get two, you might get three, you might get four, but even if you got four, you're gonna cut one off. So let's stop. start by teaching you how to make a seam. First of all, if you look, right on this side here you'll see that the seam is nice and flush all right that's your top side that's your showing side that's the side you'll lay on whatever okay then if you flip it over you'll see that there's a lip here okay this is your inside all right this is the side that will eventually uh be unseen all right so what you're going to need for that are some straight pins, all right? I prefer the one with the little balls. They're easier to see. If you're using a sewing machine, which I highly recommend you do, it makes it easier so when you come up to the boot, 
you're able to pull it out before you slip it underneath the boot um, and see it real well instead of accidentally hitting a needle to a pin and breaking the needle type of needle you should be using um, should be a canvas needle yes there are different types of needles for sewing machines and um, the uh, canvas needle is the one you want now um, I did already make mine um, unfortunately I wasn't able to videotape it because the only access to a sewing machine I had was a friend that didn't want to be videotaped or have any recording in her house and she wouldn't let me take her sewing machine so I kind of got stuck in a uh, you know it is what it is type situation so but if you can see up here right and I'm going to do it from the top side to, and hopefully make it a little bit easier to show you. All right. All you're really going to do to create a seam is you're going to fold it and you're going to want to do that at about an inch. All right. Don't, don't mind my phrase here. This has uh, been um, cut for a while now and it's kind of fraying. And that's the whole point of a seam is to keep it from fraying. And then you're going to want to fold it again. All right. Keeping in mind of that one inch right and I'm getting it a little big there Let's see if we can keep it down a little bit okay now I'm not gonna do a perfect job because I don't want to waste your guys's time or bore you too much but you might have to do it as you go along as you can see it's wanting to kind of curl up over here you might have to readjust and, and go you know as you go along but all you're gonna do is you're going to take these little straight pins here all right and you're going to go down through all right down through back up and that's going to hold it in place do this every four to six inches all right oh i didn't get all the way down and through shame on me make sure you get all the way down all the way back up through that's what's going to hold it all right so every four to six inches right make sure you got your seam you know pretty much the same thickness or width or whatever you want to call it all the way down through all right now i'm not going to bore you with you know making you watch the whole thing so i'm going to go ahead and pause the video here real quick and i'm going to do this up and you need to do this everywhere that there is not a seam, okay? Alright folks, once you get it all pin or pinned up, <laughs> funny, you see how it's double stitched, alright, right here, double stitched? You want to do the same thing. You want to make one line and then a second line all the way down the length of this, alright? Um, when you do cut this, make sure that you're cutting um across the six foot and not across the nine foot okay so you know you want to um <clears throat> always have that six foot length going on always have that six foot length going on and that's because eventually all right we are going to fold it over like this all right um actually the other way around but just as an example real fast and you want this to be as close to three feet when you're all done as much as you can so you got plenty of room um, you know from shoulder to shoulder you have a nice wide bed going on okay and it, it that three foot um, well actually it, it'll be just a little under three foot but that that's a perfect width and then you don't have to worry about you know cutting that you only got to worry about cutting the length not the width all right so always keep that six foot width um, now if you want to be lazy guys down here on this end all right you don't have to make a seam here what you can do because we want to make a two inch mark okay or two inch uh, cuff all right you can actually bring it over like that just fold it under once okay and then 
double stitch across this line all right now still pin it down when you're doing it i'm not going to bore you with that right now um or i'm not going to bore you with it at all but you still want to pin that down okay so that you get a good two inch to three inch wide um that choice is up to you i would go with uh you know about about like that much okay which comes out to probably about two and a half inches all right for comparison there's a pen all right um actually you know what i'll just break out the measuring tape real quick yeah that's three inches all right so about three inches all right and then and you're going to want to do a double stitch on this side and you'll want to do a double stitch on this side all right so on both sides have a double stitch reason being is this is going to get grommets put into it and you want a good space for the grommets all right and uh, where the grommets are going to go all right you're actually going to want to do a square stitch all right like that so it's nice and supportive all right you can even bring it down to that two inches if you want if you think the three inches a little much you can go ahead and bring it down to the two inch all right but any which way you're going to need grommets and i did show you guys this in the first video but i'll show it again there are 20 grommets in this kit i sent a link or i set up a link in the kit or for the kit on amazon in the first video all right and that's because you're going to want grommets so that when you get this thing set up you can actually stretch it tight at each end all right so anyways let's forget about that for a second now that you have your seams done up right you're actually going to flip this around you're going to bring it back like this okay and then you're going to do a triple stitch the whole length right here. All right. So not quite that far away. You want to get it tighter, but I'm just trying to show you, you know, the space that you want to do it. You don't want to do it on the seam itself. You want to do it just to the side of the seam. All right. Double will cut it, but I recommend going ahead and tripling it up. All right, then once you get that done, what's gonna happen, all right, I'm gonna cut the video for a second. I'm gonna pin it up so that it stays shut and I can show you a better example, all right? All right, so once you get it sewn up like this, so it's creating a tube and you can actually fold these apart like that, okay? That's exactly what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna fold it apart and make it flat okay and then you're going to want to roll these ends up like a cuff okay before you go ahead and sew the ends like i told you okay so you'll roll it up like a cuff i'm not showing you real well here but you'll roll it all right like a cuff all right now this will be easier with sewn and not needled But you'll want these to go flat, right? Sp spread apart like that. Let me make it a little more easier to see by going ahead and doing it from this view. All right, so this would go flat, and then you pull it back and sew it so that it ends up like this all right so there's your your cuff all right your two inch cuff i know it's a little short but i got these needles going in so it's kind of hard and then this would be able to lay flat okay and uh, I'll show you a better example, but I just want to show you how that you would do it is you just roll it back and then you would sew it in a circle around the sewing machine. Now, let me 
show you the example now that you got the gist of what you're doing <clears throat> all right what you're trying to go for all right here's one I haven't finished yet and I'm going to show that to you is right here okay you see how it's here's the the two factory seams all right and they're actually able to lay flat like that underneath this nice wide cuff here all right as you can see I went with a three inch cuff but it's got that real it, it lays flat underneath and it lays flat that way okay so that's what you're looking for all right and then eventually you'll be able to pull it inside out okay so that it's the right way and that's all I'm doing here just pulling it inside out or actually right side out not inside out we sewed it together inside out and then we're pulling it around to right side out okay now once you get that all done all right and you've got that cuff like I said now it might be kind of hard to see here but you'll see that there's a sew line here right right here and then there's another sew line right here and that makes the square that I'm talking about and it's already from the underside got it going along here so now you have a little square right and in the middle of that square is where you're gonna put a grommet all right right in the middle of the square is where you're gonna put a grommet now I'm not gonna show you all the steps to a grommet because I only have enough to do it and this is not finished yet because you should waterproof it before you put the grommets on all right guys so waterproof it before you um, put the grommets on and uh, just a, a little back to what I said in the beginning I'd give you some helpful tips on how to make it go faster now I'm recommending that you use the beeswax waterproofing compound and the reason why is it will literally make it stronger let's say it only holds 200 pounds with you know out the beeswax it will hold 300 pounds with the beeswax the beeswax compound it will last years I don't even know how many years because I still have some beeswax stuff that is you know still to this day you know here it is 10 years later I have a little canvas uh, pouch somewhere that was beeswax uh, waterproofed and it is still waterproof it is still holding up it has no holes no frays it's doing really great now do I use it all the time no but it was built to last because of the fact the beeswax was put on it and everything was double stitched okay now I didn't say this in the beginning on the how to make the beeswax but you're actually going to need a double batch all right I show you how to make a single batch but if you're gonna do one of these in the beeswax make a double batch save yourself some time so you don't have to go oh my gosh I don't have enough which you will run out you know a good halfway to two-thirds of the way through of the beeswax and then you'll have to make another one that's one helpful little tip on how to make things go a little smoother and faster for you but if you don't want this for long term like I do like I said this is for my inch bag I'm never coming home bag which means I'm gonna be staying out in the forest for years and years and years or you know whatever and I wanna have a nice comfortable bed um, for years and years and years all right you can take just straight linseed boiled linseed oil and you can paint brush it on you can get one of those you know pump sprayers the ones that are you know big canister it's got the pump on top you can put it in there pump it up spray it on you know however you want to do it just make sure you get it really good and saturated let it sit out and dry for a good amount of time don't do it inside 
but you can waterproof it that way and it is a lot faster to do that way i will not lie to you a lot faster but if you want it to last and not have to worry about respraying it or finding more linseed oil after you know shizzy hits the fizzy as the canadian prepper likes to say um i would go with the beeswax compound all right if not if it's you're just a regular backpacker you don't want to add all the extra weight and you know times are good and you're able to re-waterproof it you know every year or every couple of years go ahead and go with just the straight uh boiled linseed oil all right so that's another helpful trick on you know how to go a little faster if you're not wanting it for the same purpose i am now real quick with this little kit here all right this is what it comes with it comes with a cutting tool it comes with a two-part compression tool and it comes with um grommets all right now this is a two-sided grommet system that's how they all are all right one's gonna have a nice lip or not lip, but this little part that's sticking out right here. The other one, on the other hand, is going to be flat, all right? And the way this works, now I, uh, I sharpened mine. I found that it works okay when it's not sharpened, but if you want it to work better, go ahead and take a file and file down these edges and make it sharper, okay? And all you do is you just put it down, you take a hammer, hammer it a couple of times, all right, and a little hole cuts out, okay? Now this is waxed, just to show you how it being a little sharper really helps. Uh, let me tell you, before I sharpened mine, I'd have to hit that thing to where it was literally driving down into the wood before it would cut it, so sharpening it will really help. You take this, the side that's got that little flange or whatever you want to call it that's sticking out the side there goes on top of this tool okay and then it, it goes through the hole like that all right and then you take the other grommet all right now that's facing up so that when it goes through the the fabric you you can see it it's uh sticking out there okay so this rounded side goes to the soft rounded side that has no lip all right no lip on that side it just goes down in there that goes down and then you want the the soft rounded side on this not the sharp inner side but the soft rounded side to face up right and then you take this little tool here which is the pounding tool or the compression tool as you can see it's got a uh, you know taper to it and that's because when you go down in here that taper is going to push it apart and smash it down oops sorry about the noise guys something fell and then you're just gonna hammer it a few times okay really good and tight really good and hard you can't do it too hard you really can't all right and that's how you'd get the grommets on so now like I said you're going to do a total of 20 grommets all right five on top on each side five on the bottom on each side so it goes all the way around and I will show you what I mean right here where I actually have one done all right you've got grommets on the top and they should line up really nice all right see how they, they line up pretty decent all right all the way down and you got one or one two three four and five and then on the other side you got six seven oops eight nine and ten all right so if i spread it open you'll see that they're pretty much all lined up in the same spot all the way down and you're going to do that on both sides guys both sides all right 
So uh, I'm going to cut this video for a second and I'm going to show you what it looks like in full size all done in one moment. All right, guys, so this is what it looks like in its full size, hanging off of uh, my little canopy there. The canopy is uh, eight foot long, so it's looks like it's a little over six feet. Um, this one's for my wife. She's a little bit shorter than me. Mine's a little bit longer. As you can see, all the grommets all the way down. This one's kind of... And you can see that one's kind of hidden up underneath there. All right, grommets all the way down that side. Grommets all the way up and down that side. Same on this side, all the way down. And same on the other side. All right, it might be kind of hard to see because of the light, but guys now if you're wondering if, how this is used this is used like the double um barrel liner bags where you take two of them and make a a bed out of it um there's plenty of videos out there for you to see i will eventually set this up here in the next week or two and do my own video on it and show you but if you're anxious to get an idea of how to actually use it it's basically you'll be putting two uh, good size branches or saplings all the way through that are three inch in diameter to four inch in diameter all right and then you'll take some other sticks along this side the the side over here all right for stretching to to pull it apart real good um, to hold it shut and then there's different ways to elevate it uh, and then the grommets will be for the, the sticks that come off the side. You'll actually loop them around through to stretch it really good and tight, okay? So, uh, without getting on this video being too long, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the cows. We love the cows, right? And I'm going to call it a video. And I am going to sign off. And um, guys, do me a favor. Like, subscribe, leave comments. You know the drill. And uh, remember, at the end of the day, God is always good. And God bless.